Hi, welcome to this corporate maths video on exponential graphs. In this video, we're going to look at some common exponential graphs and then answer some questions on them. Okay, so let's start off with the graph y equals a to the power of x, where we've got a being a number bigger than 1. So that would be a graph such as this, y equals 2 to the power of x. And if I was asked to sketch this graph, first thing I would do is label crosses the y-axis at the point 1. The reason being 2 to the power of 0 is 1. On the right hand side, as our values of x are positive and increasing, the graph would get very big very quickly because 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8, 2 to the power of 4 is 16, 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So the graph would increase rapidly on the right hand side, it would grow exponentially. On the left hand side, so whenever we had x values that are negative and decreasing, so first of all, 2 to the power of negative 1 would be equal to a half, so it's going to get smaller on the left hand side. If I had 2 to the negative 2, that would be 1 over 2 squared, which is a quarter, so it would be 1 over 4. And as the values of x decrease, the values of y would decrease as well, and they would get closer and closer to 0, but never quite reach it. So the x-axis would be what we call an asymptote. So the graph would look something like this. If you had the graph y equals 3 to the power of x, it would look very similar. It would still cross the y-axis at 1. It would still increase rapidly on the right-hand side, and actually slightly more rapidly because we're using 3, so it would be 3 times 3 times 3 and so on, so it's going to get bigger a bit quicker. On the left-hand side, it would still decrease and approach 0, and actually decrease and approach 0 a bit quicker than the graph y equals 2 to the power of x, and so on. So for if you have y equals a to the power of x, and a is any number bigger than 1, it would look something like this. Okay, what happens if we had the graph y equals 1 to the power of x? Well, this graph, if we had y equals 1 to the power of x, well, if we put 1 to the power of 0, that's 1. 1 squared, well, that's 1. 1 to the power of 1 was 1. 1 cubed is 1. 1 to the negative 1 would be 1 over 1, which is 1. So this graph would be a horizontal line passing through the point 1. Okay, what happens if we have the graph y equals a to the power of x? but a is a number that's between 0 and 1. So in other words, a null point number or a fraction such as a half or a third or four fifths or so on. Well, it would look something like this. And the reason being, if you had a half to the power of 0, well, that's 1. So again, it's going to cross the y-axis at the point 1. On the right-hand side, as the values of x increase, or positive and increasing, it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And you may know that already, whenever you multiply null point numbers together, the result is smaller. If you had 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, you get 0.25, um, or the fact that a half times a half is a quarter, a half times a half times a half is an eighth, and so on. The graph will approach the x-axis, but never quite reach there. Okay, so the left-hand side. So the left-hand side will be going up, which like this, and let's see why. Well, if we had a half to the power of negative 1, well, that's going to be the reciprocal of a half, which is 2. If we had a half to the power of negative 2, well, that's the reciprocal of a half, which is 2, squared, which is 4, and so on. So if we go to the left, the graph will be increasing, like so. So this is what the graph of y equals a to the power of x would look like if our number for a is between 0 and 1. Right, so we've had a look at what happens whenever we've got y equals a to the power of x. Now what happens whenever we have y equals a to the power of negative x? Now if we were to have the graph y equals a to the power of negative x whenever a is bigger than 1, such as a graph y equals 2 to the power of negative x, well again, 2 to the power of negative 0, that's 0, that's going to be 2 to the power of 0, which is 1, so it's still across the y-axis at 1. Whenever we have positive values for x, well, it will automatically make them negative, because if we were to put in x equals 1, we would get 2 to the negative 1. So what will happen is, what was on the left-hand side will go to the right-hand side, and what was on the right-hand side will go to the left-hand side. In other words, the graph will just be a reflection in the y-axis. And also, if you know your transformations are graphs, and you know that if you've got y equals f of x, that the graph y equals f of negative x will just be a reflection in the y-axis. So if we look at the graph y equals 2 to the x, and we, and we look at the graph y equals 2 to the negative x, it will just be a reflection in the y-axis. And it'll be the same for whenever we have values of a between 0 and 1. If we have the graph y equals a half to the power of negative x, that will just be a reflection of the graph y equals a half to the power of x in the y-axis because obviously if you were to put in positive powers it will make them negative to begin with and then you'll be doing the reciprocal to get positive more quickly and that's it so if you have the graph y equals a to the power of x and a is a number bigger than one it will start off very small and increase pass through one and then get very big very quickly if that number instead of being bigger than one is between zero and one so you had y equals a to the power of x and it's between zero and one it will start off very big decrease pass through one then get closer and closer to the x-axis 
If it's a negative power, it will be a reflection. So if you have y is equal to 2 to the power of negative x, instead of being the normal graph going up, it will be a reflection. So it looks something like this. And then finally, if you have the graph y equals a half to the power of negative x, again, the graph a half to the x would look something like that. Because it's a negative x, the values of x will be changed from positive to negative or negative to positive to begin with. So it'll just be a reflection in the y-axis and it would look something like that. So let's have a look at our first example. So our first example says, sketch the graph of y equals 4 times 3 to the power of x. So this question is a little bit different because we've got the multiplied by 4. So let's do an xy table, x, y, and let's choose some values of x. So minus 2, minus 1. 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay, let's start off with 0. So 3 to the power of 0 is 1. Then multiply that by 4 is going to be equal to 4. Next, whenever x is equal to 1, 3 to the power of 1 is 3 times by 4 is equal to 12. Next, whenever x is equal to 2, you're going to have 3 squared. 3 squared is 9 times by 4 is 36. So we're getting very big very quickly. Whenever we think of a negative power, so 3 to the power of negative 1, that's going to be a third times by 4 is 4 thirds. And then finally, whenever x is equal to negative 2, that's going to be 3 to the power of negative 2. That's 1 over 3 squared, which is a ninth, times by 4 is 4 ninths. So if we were to sketch this, it would cross the y-axis at 4, and then it's going to get very big very quickly because it goes 1 across 12 up, 2 across 36 up. And on the left-hand side, it's going to get closer and closer to 0, but never quite reach there. Okay, so it's going to look something like this, and that's it. Okay, our next question. Our next question says, sketch the graph of y equals 20 multiplied by 2 to the power of negative x. So again, let's draw an xy table, x and y, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So whenever x is equal to 0, well, it's going to be 2 to the power of 0, which is equal to 1, times by 20 is 20. Next, whenever x is equal to 1, well, it's going to be 2 to the power of negative 1. Well, that's going to be 1 over 2, which is a half, times by 20 is 10. And then whenever x is equal to 2, that's going to be 2 to the power of negative 2. So that's going to be 1 over 2 squared, which is equal to a quarter. And a quarter times 20 is equal to 5. And then the right-hand side here, well, actually looking at the xy table, you can actually see there's going to be double each time. So it's going to be 40 and 80. But let's just test and see. So whenever we have x is equal to negative 1, well, 2 to the power of negative negative 1, or the negative negative make it a positive, so that's going to be 2 to the power of 1, which is 2, times 5. And finally, 2 to the power of negative negative 2, that's going to be 2 to the power of 2, which is 4, times by 20, which is 80. And that's it. And if we sketch this, it crosses the y-axis at 20, and then it will come down very quickly and approach the x-axis but never quite reach there. That's it. So let's have a look at our second last question. Our second last question says, the sketch below shows a curve with the equation y equals a b to the power of x, where a and b are both bigger than zero. And the question asks us to find a and b. So we've got this curve and it's got two points on it, p and q. p is the point 0, 3, and q is the point 4, 48. So at this point p, we know that x equals 0 and y equals 3. And at the point q, we know x equals 4 and y equals 48. So let's use those to help us find the values of a and b. So let's start off with the point p. So whenever we're at p, we know that x equals 0 and y equals 3. So we substitute those into our equation. We're going to get 3 equals a times b to the power of 0. Now, because obviously y is equal to 3 and x is equal to 0. Now, b to the power of 0 will equal 1. So we're going to have 3 equals a times 1, or just a. So a equals 3. Fantastic. Now, at q, we know that x equals 4 and y equals 48. So if we substitute those in, and also we know that a is equal to 3. So if we draw down our equation, which is y equals a b to the power of x, if we substitute in our values of a is equal to 3, x is equal to 4, and y is equal to 48, we will get 48 equals 3 times b to the power of 4. Now if we divide by 3, we're going to get 16 is equal to b to the power of 4. And obviously here, we're going to work out the fourth root of both sides. Now we know that b is bigger than 0, so we're just going to focus on what b is as a positive value. Well, the fourth root of 16 is equal to 2, so b will equal 2. So the value of a is equal to 3, and b is equal to 2. So our equation will be y equals 3 times 2 to the power of x. Right, and our last question. Our last question says, and it's a very similar question, I've just given us two different points here. The sketch shows a curve of the equation y equals a, B to the power of X, where A and B are both bigger than zero, and we've been asked to find A and B. Now we've got the point C and D this time. We've got C is the point 290, and D is the point 5, 2430. Okay, so let's write our equations. So at C, 
we're going to have, well, y equals a b to the power of x. So it's going to be y, which is 90, equals a b to the power of x, and that's 2. And at d, we're going to have, instead of y, we're going to write 2430 equals a b to the power of 5. Okay, so we've got the two equations, 90 equals a b squared, and 2430 equals a b to the power of 5. Now we want to work out our values of a and b in these simultaneous equations. Now the thing here is we are told that both of them are bigger than 0, so you could divide one by the other, but I'm going to use substitution. So I'm going to make a the subject of the first equation, let's call this equation 1 and this equation 2. So making a the subject of the first equation will give us a equals 90 over b squared, and I'm going to substitute that into the second equation, so it would give me 2400 130 equals 90 over b squared times by b to the 5. Now b to the 5 divided by b squared would be b cubed, so we're going to get 2430 equals 90 b cubed, and then dividing by 90 will give us 27 equals b cubed. Taking the cube root of both sides gives us b equals 3. Now we know b is equal to 3, we can substitute that into equation 1 to get 90 equals a times 3 squared because b is equal to 3 and then 3 squared is 9 so you're going to get 90 equals a times 9 divided by uh, 9 gives us a equals 10 so a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 3 so this equation would be y equals 10 times 3 to the power of x and that's it